Hello and welcome to Extending Existing Platforms into the Cloud with Apercept AWS SDK for Delphi. I'm Richard Hatherall from Apercept, author of the Apercept AWS SDK for Delphi and Embarcadero MVP for Delphi. So uh, before we move on, let, let me just explain um, where uh, this talk um, comes from. Uh, so I was uh, recently uh, in Salamanca for the International Pascal Congress. And uh, Antonio uh, Zapata from Embarcadero uh, uh, asked me if I'd like to uh, demo the Apsept SDK uh, as a part of his uh, series of talks on cloud computing. Um, and as a part of his series, he was talking about uh, things like uh, RAD Server, uh, which is uh, an Embarcadero uh, product uh, for building REST services and so on. And um, yeah, and our conversations led down the path. Well, some people will have deployments uh, uh, that already exist. Uh, but they might want to make it, uh, use of cloud services. And how do you do that, uh, especially if the clients are mobile clients? Uh, and we'll we'll have a look at, uh, at that now. So, uh, so the scenario, so Antonio uh, kindly sent me over a, pro uh, a project we're going to see in action shortly, which is basically a mobile or desktop application that connects to a RAD server. Um, so a REST, uh, a set of REST endpoints uh, backed by an interbase database. And uh, we want to extend that with uh, file submission. So we want to be able to take a photo on the, on the app and then submit it uh, to our platform. The problem is if we submit to our platform, if it's uh, whether it's RAD server or whether it's any uh, JSON RESTful service, if we suddenly start going pushing large files to it, whether that's uh, whether that's pictures or videos or any other large files, we're probably going to find ourselves with capacity issues before too long. So uh, we need to find a way to extend into the cloud to make use of the cloud because after all that's one of the things it benef th that we can benefit from is is uh, is its ability to scale and provide capacity uh, on demand uh, and the other thing is storing uh, large files is probably not best suited uh, in something like uh, interbase uh, which is uh, you know a relational database management service uh, it's you know, technically you can store blobs in it, but it, it's probably not the most efficient thing to do. So let's think about a solution. First of all, we could talk from our servers to the cloud, and that would solve the problem that we don't store uh, files in our uh, relational data. Um, but it doesn't solve uh, every problem. We would need to add some credentials, that's fine. We've got a private server, so we can safely, securely store credentials for accessing the cloud, that's great. But it doesn't resolve our capacity issues. So let's consider going straight to the cloud. So we want to submit our files from our mobile applications straight to Amazon S3. So that will reduce the capacity, that will reduce the load, the bottleneck we would have created by going through our servers, that's now removed. So we should be able to submit uh, huge volumes of data um, uh, to our platform. The problem we've got here is credentials on the client. How do we, how do we resolve this? How do we get to credentials? Now on the server, we can we could safely store them if we were deployed on Amazon Web Service servers on EC2. We could potentially have just been granted uh, credentials to do what we need uh, from the server. We wouldn't have even need to set credentials, 
and our and the AWS SDK would just resolve those for us. Um, but if we um, if we're on mobile devices, there's there's no source for credentials. So so how do we go about getting that? So the Amazon solution is temporary credentials. Now, temporary credentials in Amazon are provided by uh, the AWS Security Token Service. And we uh, ask for temporary credentials. Uh, there's a number of methods to ask for temporary credentials, but the one we're looking at here, the one uh, probably the most common used one is, uh, is assume role. So we would make a request to SDS, it would come back to us with a set of temporary credentials for the role that we've asked for. And then our uh, web service is going to send those down on request uh, down to our mobile application. And then our mobile application will be able to use those credentials to directly access the cloud. So we are now acting as a broker. We are a credentials broker for our application. So our application, it doesn't need to know anything about STS. Our server application knows about STS. It knows the details about how we get credentials. And all of all our mobile app does is make a REST request for some credentials. It's our server that takes care of that and returns them. Now, STS tokens, um, or uh, STS credentials, um, are um, are issued with a lifespan that can be anything from 15 minutes to 12 hours, but by default they're normally about an hour. Uh, so, so your your application does need to be designed to refresh those tokens whenever whenever they expire. It needs to uh, reach out to your service again, say, hey, can I have some more credentials? And your service then needs to uh, resolve them and issue them back to the client. Um, uh, but but that's uh, that should be pretty straightforward, and we'll, we'll see that in action uh, uh, in the demos. So here's an example of an assume role. Um, so you need some credentials with permissions to assume the role. So so. Uh, your credentials are going to be for a. Uh, they're they're either going to be issued to you if you're on EC2 uh, or on ECS. You you can be issued a service role credential automatically by those services. And as I say, the AppSet AWS SDK can automatically resolve those for you. You don't need to configure that. It, it if if you're deployed on EC2 or ECS, um, they will be detected and resolved automatically. If uh, you are deployed on your own on-prem system, uh, like uh, I would imagine most existing platforms that want to work in this way probably are, you need to create a user. And that user needs to have permission to assume a role. So, uh, so the role that you create to be assumed that gives the permissions has to have a trust relationship uh, with the user that you are making the calls from and we'll see that uh, we'll see how to create that uh, shortly um, and then uh, so the second bit of information you need is uh, you need the Amazon resource name of the role you want to assume and you can see here an example on line 12 that's an Amazon resource name um, and uh, then you need to have a session name for uh, for this uh, for this role assumption, so so this is going to be a piece of data that STS uses. It it will uh, it will log that into AWS CloudTrail if uh, if that's enabled on your account, and it can be used for tracing uh, issues later on. But you uh, you generate that piece of information, uh, and then we call assume role, and we say if it's uh, successful, we we can do something with the credentials. So um, you can. Uh, it's worth noting here. We're not going to see this here, but it's you can attach an optional policy. So the the role that we define has one set of uh, permissions attached to it. 
those permissions are the boundaries of what the role can do. If, for example, you say on this role, it can read and write everything within an S3 bucket, but on your server, you know what users should and shouldn't have access to. Say, for example, you want to create um, you want to create an area for people to store their own files. You can define um, folders for those users, and you can say, um, "I'm going to attach a policy um, that is going to be used in conjunction with this assume role," and uh, and it, the permissions become effectively an intersection between what the role provides and what your policy provides. So you can't go wider than the role, you can't grant more permissions than the role, but you can narrow the permissions um, it, to be more appropriate for that uh, particular session. So let's jump right into the demo now and, uh, and see how this all works. Before we uh, start building things, let's have a quick look at our starting point. So, uh, uh, so the application I've received is uh, is this. It's installed on my device. Let's launch it here. It's basically a case management software. Uh, you can add more cases. I'm just going to tap on case one, and I'm then going to uh, tap the note icon on the top right hand corner. And there you go, I've added a, a text note to this case. And if I, uh, if I click the photo, I've got the user interface to add a photo here. Um, and uh, I can take a photo, I can use a photo, and then I've got a user interface here to add a little description to the image. Um, uh, if I want, and then to push the button in the bottom right hand corner to send it, but it does nothing at the moment because there, there's nothing uh, behind the scenes that's uh, that's connected up. So let's have a quick look here at the starting point that uh, Antonio sent over to me. Uh, he sent me a, over a project group with two projects in it. Uh, one of them is RAD Server, which is the RAD Server component, and another is FMX, which is the mobile application. But if we have a quick look at the server side first, it's very simple. We have a data module that takes care of all of the business data. Uh, and then, um, uh, based on my conversation with him, uh, he, he implemented a, a credentials endpoint here. So. The idea of this uh, credentials endpoint is it's a resource called credentials, and this is going to return a JSON payload, uh, which at the minute is just dummy data. Uh, we can have a quick look at that. If we say localhost 8080 slash credentials, we, we get back that JSON payload. So, um, because we've kept it really simple as well at the moment, there's no authentication in this application. In a real world application, you would have an, a layer of authentication that means those credentials wouldn't be uh, accessible like that. But but to keep this demonstration really simple, um, uh, we're, we've left that authentication uh, and authorization out. So uh, So that's the server side. And then if we look at the uh, FMX app, uh, I'm, I'm going to ignore uh, the forms and frames, uh, the user interface isn't what we're talking about here. Um, uh, we've got a modules.database, which is an internal um, uh, database uh, for uh, handling uh, the data that we um, retrieve from the API in memory. Uh, so we're not going to look at that. Uh, the two areas we're going to look at is uh, we have an API for API access. This has an EMS provider, a TEMS provider here, and it's configured with a cases and a files 
and a credentials endpoint. So the credentials endpoint is what we're really focusing on. Uh, it's simply uh, provide. It's connected up to the EMS provider, and it's the resource credentials. And there is a credentials, a T REST response uh, credentials response here that uh, is configured so so we can uh, deal with the JSON that comes back from this. There's no, in, there's nothing really interesting in code at the moment. There's, there's no code that's going to help us particularly here. Right now, we need to do something about that. Uh, we have a modules.cloud. So this is our cloud module. So there's no components in it, but there's, there's some interface here that's used in the rest of the application um, and there's there's two there's two functions uh, or uh, there's a function retrieve image for getting back uh, an image from our S3 bucket, and there's a store image here, uh, and that is for um, for actually storing a file that uh, that we an image that we capture, and uh, there's some callback procedures uh, for the user interface so they know when the uh, the file's been stored. Uh, so we're, we're now going to need to uh, do something about these at the minute as you can see there is nothing in these file in these uh, implementations um, that's why nothing happens when uh, you try taking a photo on the app um, okay let's uh, let's actually get to work the first thing we do before we jump into Delphi is make sure we've got the resources we need in Amazon. So to do that, I'm going to create a, a bucket um, and uh, we're going to call that coding bootcamp extending. And uh, it's in the same region that we've been working in in the demo so far. Uh, and I'm just gonna hit create on that, create bucket. Uh, so now we have a bucket uh, to send uh, uh, photos to. Uh, I'm going to hop over to the Identity and Access Management console and we're going to create a user. We're going to need a, a user for the RAD server service to access. So we're just going to create a user and we'll call it RAD uh, server. And I'm just going to say next, uh, and then I'm uh, I'm just going to uh, create it without any permissions right now. Um, uh, we're just going to say next, and then we're going to create that user. Uh, I'm going to go into this user, and I'm going to generate some security uh, access keys for it, some credentials, uh, so I can use it. Uh, so I can put these stored on the RAD server for the server to use. So if I hit create an access key, I'm just going to say it's an application running outside AWS. And uh, I'm going to say next. And then I'm just going to and describe what that's for, RAD server. Um, and we'll just say create access key. And it gives me an access key here. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to um, just store that somewhere for the time being. I'm going to copy the secret access uh, uh, secret access key um, and I'm going to store that uh, for use in a moment. I'm going to I'm going to configure a profile in the AWS config of the RAD server um, to use those credentials. So I'm now done there. Uh, so uh, I'm going to hit continue on that. Uh, we're then going to need a uh, we're going to need a role to to assume to give the permissions we need. So uh, we so we don't necessarily need permissions directly on that service account because we're going to grant them through a role that's being assumed. So if I go to roles and hit create role. We're going to uh, create a, uh, a custom trust policy and I am going to, in fact, uh, I'm just going to say add principle and I'm going to add the 
principal as an I am user and I'm going to just quickly paste in here the Amazon resource name of that uh, that uh, user that we uh, just created. Uh, so that is saying, in fact, we can say allow rad server. Uh, it's, it's going to allow our rad server user to assume this role. Uh, and then I'm going to say next. And uh, I'm not uh, I'm not going to create a policy here right now. I'm just going to say next. Um, and then I'm just going to create this role. Oh, I need to give it a name. So we're going to call it rad server uh, uh, users. So this is this is the role that users of rad server uh, of our rad server instance are going to uh, potentially have access to. So I'm going to create that role. Oh, create. And then I'm just going to go into that rad server users role and I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to create an inline policy. Um, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just paste in some JSON here and I'll explain what it is. So this is uh, two statements in, in this policy, allow reading buckets. So for the, uh, we are going to allow the actions S3 bucket get location and S3 list bucket for the resource of, uh, of the uh, coding bootcamp extending bucket. And we are allowing that. Uh, and then we are allowing reading and writing bucket content. So I'm saying here, I'm allowing get object and I'm allowing put object uh, on the uh, on the same bucket uh, for any objects within that bucket, that asterisk there, and I'm allowing that. So I'm just going to say next on that. And, uh, and uh, oh, I need a policy name, sorry. Uh, we'll call this allow s3 uh, allow rad server s3 access so we'll create that so that's now created and we should have all of the resources we need let's start by implementing store image uh, so uh, with store image uh, we're going to accept an uh, an image stream, which is going to be the contents, and then we have a callback, a progress callback to say when things are done, and a finished callback to say when it's fully complete. So, uh, first thing we need to do is we need to import S3. We know we're going to use S3, and uh, we need a uh, an S3 client. So I'm going to create a property here that will lazily uh, initialize an S3 client. So uh, prop ro S3 client, and that's an IS3 client. And let's get S3 client. And we're going to need a field for that to, uh, to store that. So FS3 client, and that's IS3 client. So we're going to say if uh, we have an F uh, S3 client assigned, we're just going to early exit with that. Uh, otherwise, we are going to have to initialize it. So let's say F S3 client. Uh, equals ts3 client dot create and let's just make sure we set the result to fs3 client to return it um, but we're going to need some options here uh, for our demo we know we're running in the eu west 2 region so i'm just going to make sure we have some options here and we're also going to need some credentials um, to, to make sure that this is going to work. Remember, we're in a mobile application which doesn't have a source of credentials 
so the SDK isn't going to magically load in uh, some configured credentials. So we're going to need to tell it where to get credentials from. So if we quickly say we have a LS3 options, here's an IS3 options. And we're going to say LS3 options equals TS3 options. And LS3 options um, dot region equals uh, it's EU West 2 we're working in. And uh, let's just move this up a little bit. Uh, LS3 options dot credentials equals, and we'll just optimistically write credentials there. And that's going to be a property. So let's do another um, read only property called credentials. And that's going to be an IAWS credentials provider. And we'll say get credentials. Now we need to make sure that we bring in, if we're using credentials providers, aws.core. And uh, we're going to have a, a stored set of credentials, F credentials. Now these, because they're going to be temporary credentials, they're going to be expiring. So the uh, so let's define that we are AWS, our F credentials is an IAWS expiring credentials. Uh, so we know, uh, so I know that uh, expiring credentials also implement a, uh, a, a, a credentials provider. So when we get credentials, um, I, I can say result equals F credentials, and that's not assignment compatible straight away, straight away but I can say as IAWS credentials provider. And that's going to work uh, because the the TAWS expiring credentials that we provide later implements both of those. Uh, what we're going to say is if assigned F uh, credentials um, and not um, F credentials dot is expired, then we are going to early exit with the F credentials as the uh, IAWS credentials provider. So if we don't have credentials, we are going to need to get them from somewhere. And that's going to be F credentials equals, uh, we're going to get them from, we're going to fetch them from our API. So I'm going to use our API module there. And uh, it's going to be API module dot fetch credentials. We haven't implemented that yet. So we're now going to need to go and fix that. So let's hop over to uh, our API to fix that. So in our API, we are going to need uh, that method, which is uh, function fetch credentials and that's going to return an IAWS expiring credentials and we're going to need to import the AWS core for that and let's complete that um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, to save us a little bit of time here, I'll just paste in some code. And this is just saying, uh, if we've got a, if we've got a, um, 
uh, a problem, first of all. We're, we've, we're setting result to nil, so if an exception happens, the result is just going to be nil. But uh, we are going to create a set of expiring credentials, TAWS expiring credentials, and we are going to get the JSON values out of the response for credentials.access key ID, credentials.secret access key, and credentials.expiration and credentials.session token. And uh, bear in mind that the expiration coming back is going to be an ISO 8601 formatted uh, date. So we use from date utils, you use ISO 8601 to date there um, uh, for us to get that. So that should now be everything we need uh, for fetching the credentials. Uh, and that, if we go back to our uh, get credentials in the cloud module, that is implemented. And that's all we should need for the for that module. Um, now, uh, let's move on to um, actually implementing the store image. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, quickly paste in uh, this method because it is uh, a little bit involved, but I'll, I'll step you through what this does. Um, so we need a key to store uh, the upload to, and we're generating a string. Um, we're, we're formatting a string uh, with a date and time uh, with um, with a dot png extension on the end of it, uh, we we the image that's coming in here should be a png uh, format image. Um, the we just make sure just in case this stream hasn't been uh, reset to zero. I'm I'm just uh, seeking to the beginning of the image, and then we're going to put a uh, we're going to make a put object request and we're going to put it to a bucket name, but we don't have a bucket name at the minute. So I'm just going to go up into the private declarations here and uh, I'm going to put a constant called bucket name and that is, uh, that is coding boot camp extending. And let's go back to our store image. So that's now resolved that problem. I'm going to tell the request that the content type that is coming in is an image slash PNG. I have an on send data callback um, attached to this request, which is basically going to just pass that progress detail on to our progress callback. So the user interface can, if it chooses, uh, uh, it, it can update something to, to show it's being uploaded. Um, and then we have, we actually call the response here. We call the put object uh, client, um, action of the client, and we restore the response. And we just check here that the response is successful. And if the finished callback is assigned, uh, we are calling the finished callback and we are providing the, the location in the bucket uh, so the uh, file can be later retrieved. So that is storing the image. So let's quickly just go and look at retrieve image now. This is a lot more simple. And let's just quickly write this in here. We're going to have an L response. And this is an IS3 get object response and we're going to just say to start off with the result is nil um, and we're just going to say l response equals s3 client you see we've done all of the hard work already we uh, we can use the s3 client and say dot get object and we are getting an object from the bucket that we know and we are getting the key that we are being asked for and then we say if l response dot is 
successful, we then set the result to be a T bitmap dot create from stream and we are creating it from the L response dot body. And that should be everything we need for retrieving images. Let's jump in now to actually generating the credentials on the RAD server side. So we're going to open the RAD server module uh, for credentials. And uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to um, is to provide some data in this JSON object. Uh, and uh, what we can uh, what we can do here is we can well in fact let's let's take a look how we would do that we're going to say um, let's get some credentials and they're going to be IAWS expiring credentials now we know from our uh, work on the front end that for expiring credentials we need to import the AWS core and we will then say L credentials equals, and we're just going to say it's going to be the result of a function called fetch credentials. So let's quickly just go and make that functions IAWS expiring credentials and complete that. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to say is uh, that method might return as nil. What we're going to do is say if an error talking to STS happens, we're just going to return nil. Um, so here we're going to respond appropriately in some way to our REST request here. So uh, in, instead of just returning a, an internal server error, uh, we're going to say if not assigned our credentials then we're going to uh, do something with the response we're going to say a response dot raise let's just raise a not found say okay we couldn't find any credentials um, and we need two arguments here and we'll just say not found and we'll say uh, something like could not retrieve uh, credentials um, so so we know now if we've got here we know we have some credentials so we can just fill this in saying l credentials dot access key id and we can say l credentials dot expiration but oh expiration is a t date time so we're going to need to do something with that so we're going to say uh, date to uh, we're going to need a date utility so let's just quickly go and add uh, system dot date utils and we're going to do date to iso 8601 and that should hopefully ah, expire that is the is the method we're looking for there um, and then let's do l credentials dot secret access key and uh, l credentials dot session token um, now I should bear it, I should remember to tell you. I think it should go without saying that we're returning credentials here on our endpoint, and for our demo purposes here, we're just using plain HTTP. But in the real world, you will definitely want to make sure that you have got um, SSL TLS configured on your services. Uh, otherwise, people may be able to snoop on your credentials, uh, even though they're short-lived. You should make sure that uh, that you have transport uh, security there so uh, right so let's have a look at our fetch credentials so 
uh, this is going to be so we're going to talk to STS now um, so let's in fact let's just make sure that we have here aws.sts uh, uh, imported and then I'm just going to define some local variables here and we're going to have an lsts options it's an ists options and we're going to have an lsts client is an ists client and then we're going to have an l response and we're, the action we're going to use um, from uh, from the security token service is called assume role so that will be isds assume role response so we said that we're going to return uh, nil if anything happens so let's just set result to nil straight away here and let's just say we have an L uh, STS options equals uh, T STS options and we're going to say LSTS options dot profile equals coding boot camp. So that's the AWS config profile that I'm using for this server. Uh, it's configured with the credentials that I created earlier on um, to access the uh, RAD server user which has no direct permissions, but uh, but we, we created a role uh, with trust uh, assigned to it that allows the, uh, the, the RAD server user to, to assume that role. So uh, let's have an LSTS client equals TSTS client dot create LSTS options. And uh, we're going to say, Try, but it's not a finally, it's just an accept. And I'll just put a note here saying we're returning nil. But let's just be slightly better behaved here. And we're just going to say it's only for ESTS. So we, we, we might expect STS exception to. Um, uh, we might expect that to happen. If it's something else, we should probably just internal server error because it's not expected. But in this case, we're returning nil if it's if it's an STS thing. Maybe STS is saying uh, we're, we're too busy at the minute or something. Um, uh, in which case, we're just going to end up re returning a, a not found response here. So uh, as we said, we're going to call LSTS Client dot assume role. Um, let's just make sure that we L response is going to be the result, and we're going to provide two arguments here, and um, and the arguments are um, a. I'm going to just copy in. I believe I have a note here. There we go. Uh, this is the this is the Amazon resource name of the role that we are going to assume, um, and then we need uh, the second argument. I'm just going to quickly uh, uh, paste in a value here, and it is just I, I'm just creating a session. So this is the session name. Um, I'm just creating a. a uh, effectively, well, not entirely random, but a generated value here based on the on the current date and time, uh, with a rad prefix on it. You should probably, uh, in fact, it, it would be recommended to to put some more uh, context information in here. So if you're if you're in a real world application and you've got users signed in here, you probably want to put some user details in here, maybe a username or a user identifier of some kind. Uh, that way, when uh, administrators are investigating issues on Amazon Web Services, uh, if as best practice suggests they have got um, the Amazon AWS Cloud Trail enabled on, on the account, they'll be able to trace through 
um, STS requests and see what uh, what uh, external users were effectively using uh, the um, uh, the service. So it's it's a good idea to put some kind of context that helps you uh, trace in the event that something you're not sure about is going on, uh, rather than just uh, putting a, a static value in here, uh, which means nothing to you. So that, um, we, we then need to take this response and we then, then need to say, if the L response dot is successful, we're going to say that the result equals L response dot credentials and that is everything we should need to do uh, for the rad server so let's hop over and see what happens in our application now okay before we uh, get into the demo uh, of what we've now built uh, there's just a couple of things I need to deal with one is we need to close the old rad server and we need to build and run a new RAD server. And uh, there's something else I just wanted to check in the cloud that I think I probably forgot. Uh, and that is right, I have forgotten to set the client's options. So that would mean that these options we've created here actually wouldn't have been uh, initialized with the client. So. Uh, it would have gone through default behavior and it wouldn't have connected to the, the right region or the right um, or used the right credentials. So hopefully now we should be able to hit F9. Let's go. OK, so now I can see that uh, the app has launched on my phone. So I'm going to do as we did before. I'm going to tap into case one. And we have the text note there from before. Uh, now I'm going to take a photo and there is our Lego Dino and then use photo and then describe the image. Then we're going to hit the go button and there we go. We've got a Lego Dino attached to this uh, record and if I tap into Lego Dino you can see the picture and that is the demo if I quickly hop over to our uh, S3 bucket you can see inside our extending bucket uh, wherever it is here it is and uploads and there is a, a file that we created okay so uh, that was extending existing platforms into the cloud uh, with the AppCept AWS SDK for Delphi. Uh, thank you for joining me on this talk. Um, uh, the samples we've seen today aren't in the uh, AWS SDK Delphi samples, uh, but there are uh, other interesting samples for you to go and check out on that GitHub repo. Um, uh, you can jump over to my website, appcept.com, uh, and see when things are updated. Um, you can tweet me at AppCeptHQ, follow me for updates when whenever I make a release of the AWS SDK, I announce it there. And uh, if you've got uh, any questions otherwise, you can email me at support at AppCept.com. Uh, the QR code in the top right is a, uh, with the Embarcadero logo is a link to the Embarcadero Get It Now uh, for the AWS SDK. It is available to, uh, uh, to uh, RAD, Studio and Delphi subscribers of Enterprise and Architect. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Well, first of all, good news. My air conditioning is fixed, so I will not be radiating out heat for the rest of the afternoon. And Richard and I have been chatting about it in our little private chat behind here and uh, making jokes about Hyacinth Bucket or Bouquet, Lady of the House. Anyway, oh, Richard, are you there? I believe you're there live. Is that right? Hello. Yes, yes you are. I am. 
so many non-British people are going to wonder what on earth we're talking oh, about when we do it. I was going to say that was a very British reference. <laughs> yeah, British, yes, I know. Uh, it's a long story, and I'm not going to explain it. Let me Google it and work it out. Let's see what it is. Um, brilliant demo. You, you're, you're a remarkable presenter, and uh, what I like about it as well is that your demos are full of lots of code, which is really good because um, we try to balance it out during the week. Yeah, I mean, we try to balance out during the week between um, code and visual stuff. And some people don't like the visual stuff. They want to see lots of code. And some people don't like the code. They want to see the visual stuff. Um, yeah. But it's an SDK. So what are you going to do? Show them, you know, okay, show them an image, but that's it. So yeah, it's one of those things. Um, so I did star some questions. You asked about um, Conrad, and uh, who I recognize. He comes on these conferences quite a lot. And uh, he asked you this. If someone knows the get credentials endpoint, they could still impersonate your app. Should you also secure the endpoint with some other token embedded in the client app? Over to you. Yes. So I probably didn't, maybe I didn't make this clear enough at the start. This is a demo app was, was really trying to present that there are users of an existing system, like a RAD server system. Uh, to simplify things, we didn't involve all of the authentication of uh, of that. But in real world, you will want to protect that credentials endpoint appropriately. You might actually choose not to pr uh, protect it. You might choose to issue some special guest credentials uh, um, for your application. Um, it, but uh, your application server will probably decide what credentials to appropriately give um but but most scenarios certainly in corporate systems and things you would you would definitely want a, an authentication layer in front of of that yeah. endpoint so there are horror stories of people getting it wrong <laughs> with aws and uh and i have seen them be nice about people that have made an absolute boo-boo and accidentally run up um, large bills, but it's not often that they do have much sympathy with people who are doing apps. Um, I think that uh, it's important to understand that the uh, the um, authentication part is actually quite a significant sort of um, thing that you need to focus on. If you don't know how to do the authentication, go away and learn it because um, getting it wrong could potentially you know, mean that either your free account suddenly stops working because <clears throat> there's a free tier that you get for a year or something like that. Uh, and um, there are limits on that. And eventually you'll, you'll stop uh, being able to use and, your free account. And, and that's why I really like, uh, like to push on my previous session, I talked about Cognito. Um, it, I, I wouldn't recommend to anybody to go and write their own authentication from scratch if they uh, if they really don't know what they're doing you know use somebody else's authentication uh, and authorization yeah. system yeah but, and, uh, i had i had precisely this conversation with someone uh, not only three days ago uh, where they were saying oh we'll just do it this way and i'm like don't do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and and the thing is cognito uh for for that authentication um it's i mean we talk about the costs of amazon I believe they're quite generous with that. They, yeah, I think, they are. Yeah. I think that for fifty thousand users, up to fifty thousand users, you can use Cognito uh, for I think pretty much free. I think I, you know the actual. It, it is free. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, uh, actually, I looked through because when uh, one of your other sessions, um, oh, when I was doing Amazon Poly, that's what it was. Uh, I, I used your SDK for. Um, the speaking space computer, as we called it, and uh, and I looked up uh, uh, the API because I didn't want to like code it app and then suddenly cost myself you know a hundred dollars or something uh, to uh, do the app. And actually, I realised that I, it could have done an awful lot of stuff and get nowhere near to the free tier whatsoever. So uh, I was quite surprised. And I looked through a few other things as well, like the Cognito, because you and I have discussed that for something else. That I, I have someone who. Um, wants to do some biometric authentication and then cognito on top and a few other things as well and um and i looked at that and it, it's yeah i mean it's 
they're there to make money and make no mistake amazon are about making money but they don't really want to make too much money from the little guys you know that's not really how they do business they're looking at big corporates and and yeah. uh and, and bear know, in mind that yes bear in mind that cognito is also a bit of a gateway for them so so they don't want to start charging you right up front for for that entry service that yeah. they are going to make money off of you when you start doing clever things with AI and all the rest of it. So, uh, so yeah. there are and plenty plus of services. It's more expensive. Cost. I'm yeah. sure it's more computationally expensive, expensive as well. Whereas Cognito probably isn't. And exactly. uh, Cognito, and Cognito, I think the benefit of Cognito as well is that it contributes towards the security of their API because they don't want people abusing their API, even if they can go and charge someone later. Uh, you know, it, it. I mean, it's bad bad publicity you know and i'm sure if i got a fifty thousand dollar bill one month i would make sure everybody knew about it <laughs> and, and i think a lot of news news uh, outlets would come and knock on your door and ask about it um, i so. mean I, I i do quite a lot um on amazon web services and my my bill is never that big but obviously i'm very careful about how i uh, how, how I approach things. So I, I look at the pricing models on each service. So that is an important thing to do. Uh, but I, I've seen some pretty eye-watering Amazon bills at, at various places I've worked. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I write systems for some of the UK people and they've got a hybrid hosting um, system where they use di different providers and Amazon being one of them. Ironically, probably down the line somewhere, the the middle person they're using for an alternative is probably using Amazon, you know. But uh, but um, I know that they had some servers there that were doing millions and millions of transactions um, every month, and uh, I saw the bill once for one particular server where someone had got like a little um, Wi-Fi API point. Uh, and it was supposed to be for some, uh, I think they were like turnstiles, uh, you know, to enter a building site or something. I, I'm not sure what it was, but uh, someone realized it was Wi Fi. They hadn't securely, uh, they hadn't secured it properly. So this person was using this point to surf the internet, a very poorly uh, mapped security. But because of the way it was routing through servers out in AWS and the rest of it, it racked up a massive bill. And uh, yeah, tales of woe are common, I think, for not getting it right. So yeah, great, great demo. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, so uh, I just encourage people again to uh, go to your website. Uh, look, I'm going to try and point to it. I did it first time. See, it's taken me five <laughs> days, and now I can say, yeah, you go scan this, yeah. scan this QR code, and it's nearly over now. So. <laughs> I know I, it's always the way, but the air conditioning back, so I don't care. Yeah, so <laughs> but um, yeah, if they scan that uh, code, they will go directly to your site. Your site explains everything. You've done four sessions this week. I've said to you no, multiple three. times, three. Uh, three, only three. Well, that's Sorry, not good I enough. Mean, I expect four I, from you. <laughs> I offered three to four. And I'm now relieved yeah. that I didn't have to do the fourth, to be fair. Uh, I told you, I've done four, and it could have been five. And if it wasn't for the air conditioning, I mean, literally having an hour and a half sleep last night, I'm not kidding, uh, I would have done five, but there was just nothing I could do. We, we, circumstances worked that way. But regardless, whether it was one, two, or three, or four, um, uh, but three, I uh, really appreciate it, because we've said multiple times before that people don't realize how much effort goes into this. And it is a lot of time. You, I said four hours and you said you laughed at it because it was actually, uh, for some of them, much more than that. Well, you know, from us, I know it's benefiting your, you know, your tech partner and it benefits you as well, but actually it benefits us and actually more importantly, the developers out there. And whole, hand on heart, I really appreciate it. You're a great guy. You and I get on well anyway. We, we, we chat away on other things uh about stuff but uh you know from all of us thanks very much richard i really appreciate it you know no thanks for your efforts it's been great thank you okay um so uh, we have to leave you so bye have a good weekend and uh, enjoy and the you. british uh, uh, and your thank stupid you uh, air conditioning that works for two minutes a year i know i know you don't need <laughs> it uh, anyway so um thanks a lot